This is the basic overview of the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3. Let's begin with an overview of the layout. On the front panel, you will find fader knobs for channels 1, 2, and 3, as well as a touch display that allows you to adjust your settings. You also have your play, stop, and record buttons. Pressing down on any of the fader knobs will bring you into the settings screen for that individual channel. On the left side of the device, you will find XLR inputs for channels 1 and 2. Your power switch, USB type A and C, as well as a stereo mini output. On the right side of the device, you will find your encoder knob, headphone output, auxiliary input, XLR input for channel 3, as well as a camera timecode input. On the back of the device, you will find the Sony L-mount battery, which is removed by pressing in on the side and sliding the battery out. You will also find the Sony battery sled, which is removed by pushing in on the side and carefully pulling it away from the device. Underneath the battery sled, you will find your SD card. Before putting the battery sled back on, be sure that your SD card is inserted into the machine. Then align the plastic tab into the back of the device so it is flush before pushing on the side with the contacts to fully seat the battery sled. Once the battery sled is seated properly, you can slide the Sony battery in. Once you have mounted the Sony battery, you can power on the device via the switch on the left side. It'll take a moment for the system to boot up from complete power off. If you receive an error saying that the card was not formatted by the mix pre, hit the OK button as we will need to format the card later in order to use it with the device. On the home screen, you will see two levels, one for your left and right. To change the display, simply tap on the display and you will be brought to a second page where you will see left, right, and inputs one, two, and three. Tapping on the screen again will take you to your USB inputs. Do not worry about the screen for now. It is recommended to be on the second display that shows your left, right, and inputs one, two, and three for recording. From here, you're now able to access your channel settings by pressing on any of the fader knobs. You can do this for faders 1, 2, and 3, and it'll bring you into the channel settings screen. Here you can see the channel name, the pan, which should be sent to center. You'll also see an input, which can be set to off, mic, or line level, depending on the source of your input. If it is a microphone, be sure to set it to mic. If it is an additional source, you can set it to line. There's also phantom power, which if you're using a phantom powered microphone, be sure to enable it. There's also the low cut, which when in basic mode can be set to on or off. This is useful for if you are having a lot of handling noise from your microphone. To return to the home screen, press the channel fader button. When the Mix Pre 3 is set to the basic mode, each of the channel faders will act as gain control for that channel. Turning it all the way to the left will turn the input off. This will mean that you will not hear that track. In order to rename files on the MixPre 3, you'll see a sine wave icon in the top left of the screen. By pressing the icon, it'll bring you to your takes list. At the top of the screen, you'll see your project name and underneath you'll see a list of all recordings done to this point. At the top you'll see a file name next. If you hit the edit button, you can rename the name and number of the next take. If you have done previous recordings, you can go to the screen and select the previous recordings and play them back. To preview the name of the next file, hold down the stop button. You will now see at the top of the screen the next recording file in orange. To access the menus, hit the three bars on the top right of your screen. This will bring you into the menus. Here you can view all of the submenus for the Mix Pre 3. On the first page, you will see your presets, project, inputs, and timecode. Tapping where it says menu, you can go to the second page. Here you will find your tone, record, SD card, and USB drive settings. Tapping again to go to the third page, you will see system and power. Returning to the first page, the first submenu that we will cover is the project submenu. Here you can create a new project, open an existing project, 
going to the second page, you're also able to trash a previously used project that you are no longer using. To create a new project, go to the first page, and here, tapping new, you can either use a custom name or the date. Selecting custom name will allow you to create a custom name for the project. Continuing on, going to the second page in the menu, the next menu we will cover is the tone submenu. Here, you can enable or disable the 1 kHz tone that can be generated at negative 20 dB for your stereo output. To disable the tone, go back to the tone submenu and change the tone to off. Returning to the second page of the submenus, you will also need to know the record menu. When you are in basic mode, you will only have access to pre-roll time, record trigger, and record bells. Pre-roll time allows you to have a couple of a second buffer recorded to the file from before you hit the record button. This is useful in a case where something happens before you hit the record button, it is still able to be recorded. The Mix Pre 3 allows up to a 10 second buffer. It is recommended to have at least 5 seconds. There is also Record Trigger. You do not need to worry about this for now. Record Bells allows you to have audible tones in your headphones for when you start and stop recording. Returning to the second page of the menu, you will also see your SD card settings. Going here, you are able to see how much space you still have available on your SD card. In order to format, click on the Edit button. Press Format, confirm on the, the two individual pop-ups that you are sure to, that you want to format your SD card. Once formatted, hit OK on the Format Success screen. Returning to the main SD card submenu, you will now see the total space of your SD card is available to be used. Returning to the menu, we will now go to the third page where you will see System and Power. I'll cover Power first. Here, you are able to change the battery type of the battery mounted on the back. Because you are using Sony batteries, be sure to change this to L-mount if it is not there already. Returning back to the menu and going into the system, you will now have access to adjust many of your system functions. The first preference you are able to change is the system mode. Here it is set to basic. If you're an advanced user, you can set it to advanced. If it is your first time using the machine, you can keep it in basic in order to learn the machine. You are also able to change the USB-C mode between audio and power. If you would like to transfer files off of the mix pre, set it to audio and then hit the file transfer button. Your mix pre will now act as an external drive on your computer when a USB-C cable is plugged in in order to transfer files off of the machine. Once complete, hit exit. Moving on to the second page of the system submenu, here you will find brightness, where you can adjust the LCD and LED brightnesses, as well as the date and time. Here you can verify the date and time that your machine is set to. Be sure that this information is correct as it can affect you in post-production. On the third page of the system submenu, you will find additional information regarding the unit itself. You do not need to worry about this page as it is for the equipment managers. Pressing home returns you to the home screen. Once you have completed using the machine for the day or need to change the battery, be sure to power the machine down. This has been a basic menu overview of the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3. If you have additional questions, please consult the user manual.